the once beautiful and colorful land known as the Pride Lands was completely unrecognizable after a long era of hunger and submission. Scar marked an important but dark time in the history of the Pride, long years of dictatorship that he ended up paying in the worst of ways. Ultimately, his manipulative habits paradoxically became the cause of his own doom. Zira, mate and most devoted follower of Scar, promised herself to avenge his death. But she didn't know the killers were the hyenas, not the real heir of the throne, Simba. By now, a new age had started, the age of Simba's pride. The Pride Lands had now returned to what they once were, the safest and most prosperous territory, with a very lively wildlife and the happiest inhabitants. And whilst Zira and her followers were known for hating Simba, they never caused any major problem and were allowed to stay in the Pride. For them, it was not worth the risk of being expelled and experience hunger once again. Not much time had passed, and Nala was already expecting a son. One of the most important events was coming. Simba's firstborn represented the victory of the Circle of Life, till finally the day came. Each one of the Pride Land's inhabitants showed up at the ceremony, and then Rafiki raised the cab towards the sky. The heir was revealed. He was a male lion whose name was Copa. Copa was raised very cautiously and with values since the beginning of his life. He developed a strong respect for his parents, and used to play mostly with his father, as there were no other calves of his age in the pride. This was the case, until one morning. Three lions came in peace from another pride, two adult lions and a cub. Zazu promptly referred the newcomers to Simba, who, to his surprise, immediately recognized both lions. They were Malka, old, brief foster brother of Simba, and Tama, Nala's childhood best friend. Both explained they had to migrate from their pride temporarily due to a sudden flood that made the zone inhabitable. While Simba and the lions were talking, Copa woke up and walked out of the cave. The first thing he saw? The lion cub. Finally, someone like me, he thought. The two lions instantly became best friends and things went fluently for both. The great times and days of playing made a few a get over the sadness caused by the loss of his home and gave Copa a very good friend with who he had the most fun with. Maybe too much fun, as they started coming home late and get too far too often. However, they never dared to step out of the Pride Lands, as it was strictly prohibited by their parents. Nonetheless, Simba wasn't very happy with their carelessness. One day, the two cubs, Copa and Afua, went to explore new lands of the Pride. While this was not their first time doing it, there was a difference. They decided to go further than they ever did. After some scouting, they found something that made the two cubs stop and stare. It was a cave in the middle of an uninhabited land. The strange thing about this cave, however, 
was not the cave itself, but the voices that came from inside. Copa and a few were too scared to go into it and take a look, and it was getting late, so they returned to Pride Rock. But the question persisted inside their head. What was hiding inside the cave? The next day, Copa and Afua started their day like nothing. They didn't mention anything from the day earlier, but this did not continue for long. The two friends, just as if they read each other's minds, instinctively ran towards the mysterious cave. Shortly before reaching their destination, they found something totally unexpected. There was another cub. A female cub, apparently. She was walking in the distance, so they couldn't see very well. But it seemed like she was following someone's orders coming from inside of the cave. The unknown female cub noticed Copa and Afua and stared at them with a face of surprise for a brief moment before quickly running back inside. The two best friends remained confused and speechless. Not long after, they went on with their day and as always returned to Pride Rock before sunset where Copa couldn't stop thinking about what or who he had seen. The questions now multiplied in his head. Like how long has she been there for? And why didn't Simba ever tell him there was another cub in the pride? Only he could answer. Seeing that Copa wasn't sleeping, he was asked by his father what was that kept him wide awake. Copa finally expressed his doubts. Dad, who is the lioness cub that lives in the cave? With a slightly angry face due to Copa's disobedience, Simba looked at his son and explained to him. The cub that he had seen was the daughter of an evil lioness called Zira, a rule breaker and enemy of King Simba. He didn't get into detail at first, but Simba made Copa slowly know the full story over time. It was at night when his father taught him the stories. Zira was a rogue lioness who arrived from outside of the pride with her group of nomad lionesses. Scar, the evil king that reigned during those times, let Zira and her followers join the pride. He was the first one that offered her food and a home after living all her life as a nomad. This is how she fell in love with him. And as like-minded as they were, their shared dream was to dominate the lands together and successively pass the throne to their heir. Event which never took place due to Scar's defeat. Zira is dangerous, Simba explained. She is living here only because she would die of hunger out there. Copa was staggered and a bit scared, but finally understood why Zira and her family had to be kept away from the inhabitants. Simba made Copa promise not to go back there anymore. But the young lioness he saw, he couldn't leave her there, alone, with such a spiteful mother. Perhaps, as an act of pure innocence, the little hare returned to the forbidden cave to find the female cub. Copa arrived at the cave, but there was no one out there. He went to check inside, but it was pitch dark. He didn't even dare to enter. After some moments of wandering around, searching for the little lioness, he heard a noise coming from very far away. At first, 
Coppa wasn't sure what it could have been, but the noise repeated a second time. Now it was clear, it was definitely a call for help. And it wasn't from just anyone, the voice seemed exactly one of a female cub. Copa promptly started following the voice. It was coming from farther than he thought. The call kept repeating. It was louder and louder and louder until he found himself in front of an even bigger and darker cave he had never seen before. He took courage and went inside. All he could hear were his own steps and the water drops falling from rocks and stalactites. After moments of exploration, he started hearing steps, but this time they weren't his own. Someone was hiding, and he was not just one, but many. Fear paralyzed the poor cub, but right when he was about to give up, he saw a tail coming from behind one of the rocks. He hurried, and when he turned around the rock, he found the young lioness. She was scared, hungry, and quietly crying, until she noticed Copa. Why are you here? The little prince concernedly asked. I... I'm lost. The lioness replied, I will help you get out of here. I know the way back, Copa reassured. The lioness cub looked at him with a glance of hope before getting up and follow her young savior. Despite the fatigue, the hunger, and the now slowly lessening fear, the two cubs started to know each other. It was until the hyenas showed up behind them. It was the crack of a sprig from the hyenas that made Copa abruptly turn around. Copa screamed, RUN! And the two young lions started running as fast as they could. The hyenas were far behind, but they were fast. It was easy to expect they could catch up. Copa and the female cub just kept running without turning their back once. Till finally, they were outside. The two fell on the ground, gasping for air. But time started passing by until the steps of the hyenas were gone. After finally catching air, Copa got up and looked inside, remembering what his father Simba had told him during one of the stories. The hyenas are banned from the Pride Lands, and after all, they wouldn't dare to step outside of their world. The following day, Vitania and Copa met again near Zira's cave. For the coming months, Copa, Vitani, and eventually Afua started hanging out regularly, almost every day. They even met Vitani's older brother, Nuka, with who Copa had developed a good friendship to. But the sparkle between the four young lions was Copa and Vitani's friendship which had grown so strong that it seemed as if they were made for each other. They were inseparable, always having fun, and clearly understood each other to a deeper level. But with this happiness came a great burden. Copa had to keep his two new friendships, especially the one with Vitani, a strict secret from his father. But Simba was not dumb, and had been observing little Copa for a while. He knew that his son was hiding something, and could sense that he wasn't feeling good about it. Therefore, one night King Simba took Copa aside and asked him to tell him if there was anything wrong. The little prince denied anything at first, but after Simba asked him whether he had kept his promise, 
Coppa felt very guilty and admitted to his fault. Simba knew this was going to happen at one point, and instead of getting angry at his son, he decided it was time to teach Coppa the story of his grandfather, Mufasa. During the following weeks, things evolved in the best way. However, despite Copa having learned about the danger of Zira, he couldn't stop thinking about his precious friend Vitani. What he felt was a strong sense of guilt for having told her not to see each other anymore. And they didn't. For a while. It had been months but during a random day of boredom, Coppa and Vetani noticed each other from afar. The two young lions started walking towards each other, like an invisible force that was bringing them together, until at one point, they were finally watching each other's face closely. No words needed. They knew this was from now and forever. From then on, Copa and Vetani never left each other again and spent more time together than they ever did before. It was heaven on earth for the two. Every time they were in each other's company, all problems were gone. Nothing mattered apart from their radiating happiness. They shared their thoughts, their feelings, their dreams and obviously their time. Was this love? This continued for months. However, there was someone that had been observing the two from the dark throughout that time. It was Zira. She couldn't stand to see her daughter being in love with the son of her enemy. But now, it was time for vengeance. And Zero was confident she could achieve it, thanks to a brutal plan she had prepared. This is how it went. It was a late evening, like any other. Vetani used to stay out later than usual during this period, but her mother, Zira, never questioned her about that. Until that day, Vetani couldn't lie to her and ended up revealing the truth about her friendship with Copa. However, to Vetani's surprise, Zira didn't take it badly and instead she acted interested, saying she was very excited to get to know him. What Vetani didn't know is that she was being manipulated. If Zira could use her daughter to force Copa to do anything, she could lure him into her trap so she finally could avenge Scar and take the throne. This was the biggest opportunity of her whole life. Bring your friend to me here tomorrow, Zira said to Vitani. I'm dying to meet him. The next day, Vitani went to Copa and convinced him to meet her mother. Copa was not very excited about that, but knowing that Vetani would be present and that she would never lie to him, he trusted her and they went to the cave. When Copa finally first saw Zira, he was really awed at her presence, but against all expectations, she started acting really nice. However, the way she spoke, the way she smiled, it was strange. Nonetheless, Copa noticed there was nothing at that moment to be intimidated of, and he started wondering whether his father was just wrong, or maybe she was just that, a bit weird. After the strange interaction, the two friends walked towards the exit of the cave, but after Vetani went out, and before Copa could leave, Zira quietly whispered to his ear that he wanted to see him the next day. The way she said that was dreadful, 
spine chilling, yet so quiet. When he got back to Pride Rock, he didn't tell anyone about what happened. Before going to sleep, Coppa watched at the stars, remembering about Mufasa's story, and asked, Grandad, what should I do? He waited, but got no response. This is all just a tale, he disappointedly thought. The next morning, Coppa mustered up all his courage and took the path to Zira's cave. Vitan is going to be there. Nothing bad could happen, right? Well, there was no one except for Zira, who suddenly appeared from behind the shadows. What a pleasure to see you again, she said with an unnerving tone. Where is Vitani? Cope asked, but Zira didn't reply. The young lion was almost shaking, but he did everything he could not to show his fear, unfortunately, to but avail. You'll be fine, as long as you collaborate with me. After Zira said that, a group of numerous scary lionesses emerged from the dark. This was a clear message. Copa knew he didn't have a choice. This was a couple of moments before the endless nightmare could get started. Copa was given tasks every week by Zira. The first tasks were fairly simple, things like stealing food from Pride Rock to give it back to her and her lionesses, but they progressively rose in difficulty, week after week, to the point of getting asked things like spying on King Simba and his whole family to report back to Zira so she could learn their weaknesses. But it didn't stop there. Zira, the master of brainwashing, started to distort the whole story Simba had told him, blatantly lying to Copa, saying that Scar was a benevolent king who was killed by Simba so he could steal the throne. The young prince didn't know what to believe anymore, and he was inducted into a constant state of fear. He was trapped. But finally, the last task arrived. Copa told Zira he couldn't take it anymore. He did everything she wanted. He begged to be set free of this nightmare. Zira accepted, as long as he completed his last task. So, what was the last task? Copa had to kill his father. What she didn't expect, however, was the strong devotion that Copa had towards his parents. In fact, he refused. He wasn't going to complete that task, no matter what. Zira kept her promise. If Copa didn't collaborate, she would get rid of him. So, she decided to get the revenge by her own hands instead. She started walking towards the young lion, until closing him into a corner, and she let out all of her anger on poor Copa, who tried to defend himself with his little claws, to no avail. Zira bit, hit, and mauled the young prince, to no mercy, until his last scream of desperation. Zira picked up Copa's lifeless body with her mouth and brought it to the border of the outlands where she would leave him. The night of that same day, he didn't come back home. Simba and Nala knew something had happened to him, 
all the lions in the pride started searching for him. While others were searching inside the pride, the three young cubs decided to search outside, despite not having permission to do so, as it was late night. They searched until dawn, but was still not found. Vetani suffered in silence, alone. Zira, her mother, acted like she knew nothing about it. Had she known, it was all a lie. Nuka too was hurt for the loss of his friend, but he couldn't stand the pain of seeing her younger sister suffer. So, without telling anyone, Nuka decided to explore the only zone that no one had looked nor had the courage to look into. It was the Outlands. He was very afraid and nervously looked at his surroundings the whole time that he was walking. But earlier than he expected, he saw someone laying on the ground, not that far away. He ran towards the body. He almost couldn't recognize it, but it was Copa. He was unconscious on the ground, covered in scratches, lying on a puddle of blood. Nuka started crying, trying to move Copa's body with his paw in the hopes that he would wake up, but he didn't. Nunca stayed with him for hours, until sunset, and before saying goodbye to his lost friend, it seemed that Copa was breathing. Nunca pushed his body to the other side while yelling at him to wake up, to open his eyes, to at least say something, when finally Copa opened his eyes. Nuka was crying with joy, screaming of exultation to his little friend. Copa was crying too, but not of joy. Nuka worryingly asked what had happened to him, who had done this to him, to please tell him. Copa, with a lot of struggle and with the help of Nuka, got up to say one last phrase. I'm sorry. Nuka. He then, with tears running down his cheeks, hobbled and walked away towards the horizon, not to be seen anymore.